The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello, Karen here again with The Learning Circuit. Do you have problems with spies and thieves constantly trying to break into your vaults? Well, I have the solution for you. Let's make a laser tripwire alarm. In my previous video, I talked about how laser diodes work. If you'd like to learn more about that, be sure to check out that video. For this project, a laser pointer will be aimed at a photoresistor, or LDR. If the laser beam is broken, an alarm will go off with a flashing light and siren. Let's take a look at the circuit. The main active components in this project are the laser, 555 timers, a speaker, and this rotating beacon light. Since all of these components can run off of five to six volts, I'm using a six volt four AA battery pack as my power source to keep the project compact. There will be two separate circuits run off the same power supply. The first is for the laser. The laser is sensitive to current spikes, so an LM317 voltage regulator is used. Pin three, V in, connects to VCC. A 220 ohm potentiometer used to safely control the laser's brightness is connected to V out followed by a 10 ohm resistor in series. At this point, connects the adjustment pin as well as a rectifier diode, a 10 microfarad capacitor, and the laser. Those last three components then all get tied to ground. Laser diodes can be damaged if connected to power in reverse. The rectifier diode saves the laser diode from that problem and the capacitor prevents damage from high frequency surges. That's it for the laser circuit. Now let's talk about the control circuit for the siren generator. The control circuit is made of a bistable 555 circuit. The trigger pin connects to a voltage divider made of an LDR and a potentiometer. The LDR senses the laser. When the laser gets interrupted, the LDR triggers the 555 circuit. The potentiometer can be adjusted to calibrate the trigger point. The reset pin 6 is held low with a 10 kilo ohm resistor, but can be momentarily pulled high by this button to turn off the output and reset the alarm. The rest of the circuit is connected like a normal bistable 555. Pins 4, 7, and 8 to VCC, pin 1 to ground, and pin 5 to ground with a small capacitor. Last is the output, pin 3. The output of that circuit turns on our alarm. The light in this beacon turns on and rotates, and an oscillating siren is generated and can be heard through this speaker. Now, I want to show you how simple the mechanism in this beacon is. Inside is an LED with a current limiting resistor, a small motor, and some plastic gearing to make the reflector rotate. The whole thing runs off of 4.5 volts. Later, I'll make a few modifications like bypassing the power switch, power jack, and battery pack, then soldering directly to the internal power terminals. Because of the voltage requirements and current draw, I'm running power to the beacon through a relay, which is switched by the 555 output pin three. A diode is connected across the coil for safety. Pin three also controls the siren circuit. This circuit is made of two 555 timers. Both 555 timers are set up as A-stable circuits with pins two and six tied together. That junction is connected to the discharge pin seven with one resistor and to ground with a capacitor that will charge and discharge, causing each 555 output to turn on and off. Pin seven also connects to VCC with a second resistor. The values of the two resistors and the capacitor determine the duration of the oscillation of both A-stable circuits. The output of the first 555 gets connected to the control voltage pin five of the second 555 timer, and that timer's output is connected to a 10 microfarad capacitor and the speaker. This circuit results in an oscillating siren sound. Pin four on a 555 timer is the reset pin, it needs to be held high for the 555 to be on. The output of the control circuit is connected to the reset pin of the 555 connected to the speaker. When the output goes high, that reset pin is held high, turning that 555 timer on. So when the first 555 timer output goes low, it turns the siren off. That's all she, I wrote. Let's solder it up. I normally make my board layouts pretty nice and tidy, but I got a bit lazy with this one. This circuit has six components that can't be soldered directly to the board because they need to be accessed from outside the case. 
This means I've got a lot of wires coming off my board, or as I like to call it, board spaghetti. Another decision I made was to build this all into a single circuit. If you decide to make this project, it might be easier to have the laser circuit separate so you don't have to have the laser connected by a super long wire, potentially creating a trip hazard or giving away the fact that you have a laser alarm system set up in the first place. However, a separate circuit would also require a second power supply. I'm being cheap and lazy, so I'm keeping the circuit all in one unit. Whew, that was a lot of soldering. Okay, time to make the case. I'm using this plastic storage container and cutting holes for everything. The wires for the beacon, the jacks for connecting the LDR and laser, a big round hole for the speaker, and holes for the master power switch, and reset button. Then the whole thing gets spray painted black, you know, for stealth. Now to add the bits, the bits, the bits. Okay, now to solder all the spaghetti to all the bits. Since the laser and LDR will need to be positioned so they can point at each other and cast the beam across whatever barrier is being guarded, the laser and LDR will need to have fairly long wires. The other end of those wires each gets a plug. I chose two different plugs so there's no confusion as to which gets plugged into which jack on the side of the case. Remember, I'm bypassing the power switch in the beacon and soldering the wires directly to the power terminals. In hindsight, I should have used stranded wire instead of solid core wire so that they were more flexible and would smoosh into the case more easily. It's ready. I've taken the liberty of calibrating the potentiometer so that the alarm will go off when the laser beam is interrupted. Without that calibration, the alarm would either go off as soon as I power up or not at all. Let's turn this baby on. I am shockingly pleased with how this whole thing turned out. Afterthoughts? I should have put the potentiometer for adjusting the LDR sensitivity on the outside of the case so I could access it more easily. I had to tweak it if the distance between the laser and the LDR changed, and it was a bit tricky getting into the case to access it with all that spaghetti in there. Also, the audio is a bit squidgy. I'm sure there's something about my circuit that makes it that way, interference or something, but rather than figuring it out myself, I'm going to let you tell me. So, why is my siren sound so dirty? <laughs> Post your answer as well as any questions or comments about the builds on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning.